Welcome back, WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. Someplace I'll find my lottery tickets right here. It's the 50th anniversary of the Maryland Lottery. We are down here at Mako celebrating 25 years of this mess. Uh, it is all brought to you by our friends at Window Nation, 866-90-NATION. I had my windows put in a year ago. My cat loves them. My wife loves them. The thing I love is we can keep the windows open, even when it's like 80 degrees out of kind of the breeze blowing through. Good windows, important. And our friends at Raskin Global, at some point I'm going to christen this uh, this crab mallet with the beer opener on the other side. Uh, the American Dream and Raskin Global. I'll get down the Costas. We're going to be at Pappas on the 29th with County Executive and Ronald County Executive um, Stuart Pittman. Uh, we are also going to be on the 15th of September at Fadley's in Lexington Market eating crab cakes and talking to Coppin State President Dr. Jenkins as well as uh, Coppin State new head basketball coach Larry Stewart. She is the former mayor of Hagerstown. They <laughs> you know, in the beginning with all these, these titles, um, I'm not good at titles. She's Emily to me. She is the mayor of Hagerstown at one point. Now she's the madam... Secretary, I don't have your card. What do, you have a badge? You I took, took it ba off. Special Secretary of Opioid Response. Is that a made up? That, that was there one of those before that, or there no? Was this not. is this is an implementation of a problem that you've told me your story and friends and your life experience and insurance and Hagerstown. But people don't know who you are. But this title, say that again. Special Special Secretary of Opioid Response. Okay. Yes. What does that mean? So I oversee the Opioid Operational Command Center. As you can see, they gave me really easy titles to say multiple times It's a loud. lot. It's a lot. It's a mouthful. It's an yes. alphabet. So the Opioid Operational Command Center, also known as the OOCC, which is much easier to say. We actually coordinate the straight state's plan for overdose response. So we work with all of the different departments, and we work with all 24 jurisdictions. Your background. I, I You've told your life story. You've run for office. You're now in this appointed position with Governor Moore. Um, your story was very compelling to me. I found her Thank on you. the Internet, by the way. She was mouthy with somebody on Twitter about something, <laughs> and I'm like... I would never. And I said, <laughs> she doesn't care, and I like that. And, and I said, I want to have her on the show. And I just I, I just wildcatted you and reached, and I'm like, hey, I see you're kind of like my sort of pissed off on the Internet, and you're like an elected now, and I've really never been to Hagerstown at that point. I was coming up for a crab cake. And I reached to you. We never had the crab cake. We still have never had a donut down the street at uh, your place, Crumpy's. But your story, the first time I had you on, man, it, it's uh, – I'm from Dundalk. I'm hard scrabble, and I've, I've been up to Hagerstown. There's some hard scrabble. Tell your story about your friendship and for you to be the opioid – if your mother would have known you were the opioid czar 10 years ago, you're least likely yeah. – to do this job right now, right? Am I, am I wrong in yes. saying that? No, absolutely. I never had any intention of running for office. I never woke up in the morning and said, I want to be a politician one day. And like, you never <laughs> lived your life thinking, well, one day I might run for office, right? No, like, never. Right. Never. Um, but my best friend did struggle with a substance use disorder. Heroin became the love of her life. And I watched her just not access the resources that she needed. And especially in Washington County, you know, we were leading the way in all the w numbers you don't want to be leading the way behind Baltimore a City and Baltimore County. And I looked around at our elected leaders and I didn't hear anyone talking about this issue. Meanwhile, like my entire generation was was dying from, from opioids. And, and so you I got... You look at your high school class and yes. say what happened to Johnny, right? Or yes. whatever, right? Yes. And I, you're only 30 <laughs> at the time, right? Like literally. Oh, yeah, I was 30. Um, and, you know, if someone said you should run for office and my initial response was no, <laughs> like no way. Um, but the more I watched her struggle and the more I was, I just got frustrated. I said, you know what? I can sit on the sidelines and I can complain or I can run and try to do something about it. So I, I just talked about overdose issues and I won the primary and three months later she lost her life to an overdose. And to me, it was... And you couldn't help her. I couldn't help her. What, was the, what, help what her. was the lifeline then? So you're her friend. You know she's got a problem. This could be sister, loved one, brother, son, next door neighbor. You say, I got to get this person some help. Yeah. We, we, we've all known someone. I mean, uh, you know, both my parents had alcohol problems. My mother specifically, my paternal, my paternal mother, I couldn't help her, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and... At that, and it was a very frustrating part of my childhood. But I wouldn't have even known other than sitting just with her how serious it would be. Please don't disrupt my show. <laughs> We're in a serious issue here. Um, so I, don't, I, I get distracted. Um, making a call 
at that time and saying, I want help, what did you do? What, what was the help then and what's the help now yeah. that you've been hired to do this? So this is back in, you know, 2014, 15, 16. And I didn't really understand, you know, I was learning with her. Um, I didn't really understand substance use issues at that point, especially when it came to heroin. And I didn't know, like, to me, the first time I found out that she was using, I literally lied to her to get her into my car. <laughs> and I drove her to the hospital, like to the emergency room. And I was like, we're going to go in here and fix, fix her. you. Fix yeah, her. Right. Fix her. And, and that's not the way this works, right? I know that now. Most, most everyone knows but that But you didn't now. know anything else to do. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know what to do. And, and then I, I learned with her and I started, like, just reading all the books and reading all the articles and learning about substance use disorder. And, but anytime that she was ready for help, you know, when someone finally has, has, is brave enough to say, I'm I have ready. a problem. Yes. Right. Like, this is my time. You have a very short window of time before they start feeling sick again. And there was never open beds. There was never open beds. And I felt like I would just call, you know, I would I'd get online and search for treatment facilities. And there was it, an open bed would be four weeks out, five weeks out. Now, we're in a much better place now, thankfully. Um, but back then, it was so frustrating. And by the time, you know, the last time that I saw her before she died, she actually was ready to get help. And there was there wasn't any place to send her that was available in the next week or two. And, and she lost her life two weeks later. And then you go on this pathway, right? I mean, so you become mayor. Yeah, obviously grief is involved in yeah. this sort of drive involved in this. I, last night you heard you're, you're the, the mayor, and then we were going to have a donut, and then you're riding around with Joe Biden, and then Westmore's <laughs> appointed. And like, I haven't talked to you since then. So I, I'm, I'm literally just trying to figure out Catch yeah. me up here, Em. <laughs> so, <laughs> Emily Keller, former mayor of Hagerstown, is now the opioid czar, for lack of better. Yes. But, but this appointed position in Wes and Joe Biden. How did the Joe so, Biden thing have? Start with that. I, the, it's like a really cool story, actually. So That's he, why I'm he here to tell it. Coming to Hagerstown, he was going to Volvo for Manufacturing Day, and they asked me to meet him on the tarmac. So I'm like getting to meet the president, you know, it was the most surreal thing. The plane flies in, he comes down. And a couple of days before that, they had asked me to speak at, at Volvo. So now like pressure's on, because not only do I have to meet the president, I have to speak. And then they said I could ride in the motorcade. So I had like a car behind him. Can you give me the importance of Volvo in, in your you? It's a huge employer, huge employer um, in, in Hagerstown and in Washington County, one of our largest employers. And so, okay. I mean, I don't think... I didn't know about that. Yeah. I knew about it, I guess, when Joe Biden showed up, but I didn't know that. Just yes. being a Baltimore guy, I didn't know. You know, I think GM in, in East Baltimore County when I was a kid, right? And you think, oh, I didn't know there was a Volvo plant in Washington County, right? Yes. Go yeah. ahead. Keep going. Large. But, um, so, yeah, I, I'm freaking out, right, because I get to be in the motorcade. How cool is this? I'm going to be riding behind the president. I had to go, like, get COVID tested, all this stuff. So he comes down. I meet him. I talk to him for a second. And the whole thing's on video. Him and Congressman Tran was with him. And then he said, are you riding with us? So I thought, well, I'm going to shoot my shot, right? Because this is the only chance I'm ever going to have to do this. I'll jump so in I was the car like, with you. Yeah, I was like, I'm riding with you, Mr. President. And he was like, okay. So I walk over <laughs> to go get in what they call the beast. And Secret Service was like, nope. No. <laughs> nope. And pulled me You're away. You're not clear. <laughs> yeah, no. So they pulled me back. And so I was like, oh, you know, I tried. So I'm going to get in the car behind him, which was still really super cool. And then somebody else grabbed me and said, the president asked for you to ride with them. So I got to go in the beast. The door shuts. And it's me, our congressman. And this is a split second. Yes. Right. You and knew like, this was possible, president. though, right? <laughs> I mean... I figured it was worth asking. Well, what do you say? Then the door shuts, and I'm just sitting in this limo with the president of the okay. United States, and I'm like, hi. <laughs> and he says? He was, he was very kind. Well, he's good with people. He right. was. Yeah. He was very kind. It was a very cool experience. The ride was like 13 minutes because, of course, they had everything timed perfectly. Right, right, right. There was like a protest outside of Volvo from the opposite political party with like their signs. So in your 13 <laughs> minutes, are you telling him, I lost my friend opioid addiction. I ran for mayor. I'm trying to change. You, you, pretty much. Pretty much. Yes, yeah. You yeah. Give, you, so, <laughs> yeah. so, so how does that, because I saw all of this happen sort of on social media that day. I'm like, look at Emily. <laughs> <laughs> and my phone is like ringing off the oh, hook. I because can't imagine. I, it's being live streamed on all the news stations. Yeah. And so like my mom is like texting me. She's like, you're in the beast. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if I'm allowed to look at my yeah, phone. Don't, I didn't don't, like want to move or right. touch anything. Text you later, mom. <laughs> yeah, it was 
it was very cool. My, my uh, daughter and her brother were there and like got to get their picture with them, and it was a very, very neat experience. Okay, so you're the mayor at that time. What's that, yes. about a year and a half ago? How long ago was that? Yeah, it was October. October of last year. Oh, so it hadn't even been a year. Yeah. It's been 10 months. Yes. So October, that happens. West gets elected. It's January. What happened between October and January? Because obviously, every time I've ever talked to you, you wanted to be the mayor of Hagerstown. That's, I did. Like, you know, like, that, that, that was the goal. I don't yes. think you thought I'm going to be anything else, right? No, not at all. And, you know, I met the governor. I, I campaigned with him. I, I just, I believed in him. And, and I knew the first time I met him, I was like, that guy's going to be your governor. I think he was polling at, like, 1% at that point. Is that crazy? It was just that feeling of, like, this is exactly what we need. And, and we got very close. You know, anytime he would come to Hagerstown, Washington County, we'd do tours. And I would talk to him at nauseum about this issue. And so I joke with everyone that I think he was just tired of hearing me talk You're about right. substance use disorder. Like, like somebody job. give her a position. But no, I, um, I found out when I was in Annapolis just a couple of days before it was announced publicly. And it was very surreal. I cried a lot. Um, but, you know, I knew I had to resign as mayor. But at, at the same so time, but, but I mean, this me, is why I did this. Give me an interviewing process, right? Like, g- give me, a, like, how, does Wes say, I want an opioid czar? Or do you say, maybe you should consider an opioid how Because I haven't had Wes on, so I, I'll talk to him about this. Yes. I, so I did submit, I, I put my application in um, f- to be a director of the Opioid Operational Command Center because, you know, him and I talked about, like, we want to work together I thought, well, this is an opportunity of a lifetime, so let me see. Um, So the director position is now the special secretary position because he wanted to elevate this issue. It's such an issue So you are Madam Secretary? Yes. Okay, fair enough. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I already made that mistake once at the pool. Emily is still fun. That's fine. (laughs) But, yeah, so, I mean, I'm, I'm very happy to be here. You know, this issue, Maryland is eighth worst in the country for overdose deaths. And so that's not something you want to brag about. It's not. It's not. But, you know, what we have done very well over the last several years is gather data. We have a lot of data. So now we can be data driven, which is something you hear the governor say all the time. But when we do a strategy to prevent overdoses across the state, we have real numbers behind it now and real demographic information. And we can use that and tailor our outreach efforts and harm reduction uh, efforts. So while, yes, that's not something to brag about, I think we're at a very hopeful time. I don't live in the rural area, right? So I come over here, and you talk about the problems in Hagerstown. And I think, um, you know, for uh, for anybody that, that watches the news or sees the numbers, that there's been a number, like there's a, a murder number in Baltimore, that we see that number. And the mayor was here saying we're down 25%. The opioid, I, I, I've driven past many police departments that now have that number, like outside, you know, opioid deaths to be unaware, on alert for your children. And I guess I would say, well, how does it happen? I mean, heroin, tough to get, right? You know, uh, the the kinds of drugs, but opioids, you know, pharmacies everywhere, right? I mean, we, football players, and I go back to Brett uh, Favre and Viking and post-operation yes. that you get these painkillers, that they're plentiful, right? Why, why was Hagerstown and your friend, and why are the rural communities... Um, and, and what can you do other than yeah. educate people and try to get parents involved, signs? Yes. But, but I don't think we're going to take opioids off the street. I mean, they're, yeah. they're mass-produced. There's big pharma yeah. in this country. Yes. It's fact. I think prevention is really important, getting to the kids early. Um, you know, I, I had a forum with a bunch of middle school and high school kids a couple weeks ago. And the number one thing they asked for was access to Narcan and fentanyl test strips. And they said, this came from the mouths of high school kids. They said, with all the prevention efforts, you know, we don't want to use drugs, but some of our friends are going to, and we want to be able to keep them safe. It was, like, heartbreaking and also, like, heartwarming at the same time. Like, I hate that we're here, but we have to keep people alive. So the fact that our, our kids are recognizing that and, and want to be part of the solution, I think, w- w- is going to be helpful and is helpful. I think with the rural areas for that question, you know, lack of access to treatment, lack of transportation, even getting to a pharmacy, if you're on a medication for opioid use disorder, like buprenorphine, for example, and the nearest pharmacy that has it is 40 miles away and you don't have public transportation. You're not going to get it. You're just not going to get it. Yeah. That's it. So, so like, dealing with those barriers is, is, we just have to have access to treatment and medically assisted treatment, period. Well, I think the other thing is just the stigma of, of drugs in general, right? Yeah. Like, I have a drug problem. Avoid that guy. Don't don't help that person. Avoid, you know. Yeah. I've been guilty of that. You know, the avoids of, I can't help that cat. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? 
and then I attend the funeral, right? Like, and and that, that's happened a couple of times in my adulthood. Yeah. Uh, and think, to, you know, how does this start? Where does it end? I, I admitted I had alcoholic uh, parents uh, as well. My mother certainly. There, 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 there wasn't a way. You're trying to set up something that takes the stigma away. We talk about mental health challenges and th- that reaching for help is is not a weakness, right? I Absolutely. mean, that that's where it is. Your friend would still be here. Yes. Yeah. I mean, stigma is killing people. It is. And and. It can happen to anyone. I think, I think that's what we forget about. We see someone who has a substance use disorder. We see them in that moment, but we forget, like, that's someone's child or parent or friend. And it, no one wakes up in the morning and says, you know what I want to do today? Help my friend with their drug problem. Yeah. Right, right, exactly. Or yeah. I, want, I want to stick a needle in my arm and, 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 you know, destroy my life and destroy my body and hurt. Like, no one does that. No one wants to be in that position. Like, there's all circumstances that led there. And it can happen to me. It can happen to you. And I I think just acknowledging that and saying, like, this is a human being. And our job is to keep them alive and keep them safe and to keep them as healthy as can be until they're ready to get treatment and and hopefully thrive. Because people do recover. I think we lose that message a lot, too. There are people walking in this conference hall right now. Success A guy came up to me and said he had 42 years. He had on a bracelet that said, I've recovered. 42 years. Like, we don't tell that story enough. There is light. Emily Keller is the Madam Secretary. I'm getting that. The former mayor, but always will be the mayor of Hagerstown. Still haven't had a Crumpy's Donut proper. You got you to gotta go to Hagerstown at night to get donuts. It's a strain. I don't know what's going on out there. <laughs> Washington County, I've never understood that. Um, so at the base level, you're this big shot. You Annapolis, you drive down from Hager. Somebody's out there. They've got son, daughter, cousin, friend, neighbor, coworker, whatever. W- what are you telling them now that you're here? What? what 1-800, go to a website. What, what are we yeah. doing to get help? 988, you can call 988. 988, I yep. see the ads for 988 all the time. So yes. that, that's that's the front door. That's where you want people to go. Absolutely. And you can also go to beforeitstoolate.maryland.gov, which is my department's website. It has resources on there. You can get um, the help that you need. You can have access to naloxone, access to fentanyl test strips, You know, whatever it is that you need. From the citizen standpoint, you sold insurance, so you had a business and you have that background. Man, you got tangled up in county government, state government, now probably federal government in regard to what you're doing going down to Annapolis. What should people know? What should an idiot from with a sports radio station from Dundalk know about being involved in this process? That this you've taken on, you know, this is <laughs> this is cool being with like a regular person, not like a politician doing this. But you go down to Annapolis. There's a lot of people working hard to make change. I mean, there I is. don't think citizens. Eh, they're politicians. The thing I've learned is that, like, y'all are kind of trying. Even when you're down here drinking and schmoozing and having a good time, we're laughing a little bit. There's a lot of people that are taking the tax dollars and trying to do good ish with it, yeah. quite frankly. I say that all the time. I think government gets a really, really bad name. And, like, I get to see the other side of it. I get to see the people who wake up every day and work really, really, really hard for the state. It was the same way when I was the mayor. Like, the, the staff employees of the city of Hagerstown work really hard. And it's the same way with the state government. I mean, everyone has good intentions, and everyone's trying to make change. You know, this is my issue. Some people ran because... They didn't like the roadways or some people ran because they were passionate about X, Y, and Z and they go and try to fix it. I mean, there's, it really is hopeful time. Well, Emily Keller's one of my heroes here. She's down in uh, Annapolis making things happen. One of the real normal people I've met along the life's political highway. Uh, and we'll get out of Mako. You know, I haven't like put my feet in the water yet. I, I haven't. got to do that. I, 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 all I've been doing is drinking, schmoozing, eating, talking, <laughs> planning, networking, carding. I called it sweat working the other day because like <laughs> I was just sweaty, man. It was yes. 100 degrees out. <laughs> yes. I'm like I'm networking and sweating at the same time. Welcome to Mako. This is a heck of an event, right? It is. It brings all sorts of people together. Yes. I get to meet wacky people like you and you get to meet like wacky me. people like me, right? Yes, I love it. Well, keep up the good work down Thank there you. and uh, tell Governor Moore he's doing his best. I haven't had him on yet. He did come by and disrupt my set when Odette Ramos was here. He he, he, he he brings people with him. Yeah. He, he. It's very easy to see when he's here because he's swarmed with people. I think it took him about an hour to get down one row. So, so if he was here, I'd give him a hard time saying, hey, when you're president, are you going to put her in your limo? <laughs> <laughs> Emily Keller here, former Hagerstown mayor, and now the uh, Madam Secretary of Opioid Things and trying to help people. Uh, she's down in Annapolis via Hagerstown. some point, we're going to get some donuts together, all right? Absolutely. All right. And I'm going to do the oyster tour. Uh, I was going to do it this month, but it kind of got 
with the Ravens and the Orioles and the 25th anniversary and this and that. And I'm like, I'll do the oysters. It's a good idea. Is there a place to get, like, a decent oyster something, or you do, you're not eat oysters? Oh, yeah. You oh, oysters? Yeah. Oh, yeah. In Agerstown? Oh, yes. Let me know. I haven't been to the Shoeless place yet. It's good. Uh, I did the place up by the airport. Yes. Uh, Nick's. Me, I did Nick's. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else I did. I did another. Oh, I did the one in the plaza by Crumpy's. Um, back in the plaza. Give me his name. Guy's name. Rick's? Rick's. Oh, I need like He's a, a character I need, dog. I need like a third job because of how much I eat at Rick's. It's so good. His food's <laughs> unbelievable. Yes. And, and he has a character. He is he's a unique cat, Rick, <laughs> as I would say. Yes. Well, thanks for coming by. It's always Thank a pleasue to see you. Thank Ocean you. City, Maryland. It's all brought to you by our friends at the Maryland Lottery. They're celebrating 50 years. I'm celebrating 25. I got my new logo. I see that M right here. 25, we got a cupcake, and we have all the, the, the Walt Disney World uh, fireworks. Big appreciation to Jessica Vallis, our partner here at Harford Designs, for keeping us really looking good with the design lately. So find it all out at Baltimore Positive. Luke's at the ballpark. He's doing Orioles. He's doing Ravens. We got preseason, and I am signing off. It's been a long 48 hours down here in Ocean City. Now it's time to go have some fun with Joe Enoch. Back for more on Baltimore Positive, signing off from Ocean City and Mako. I'm Nestor, and we're WNST.